one of the advantages that we have right now is we understand a little bit of our own frailty. Uh, and I think this sets us up well for the next crisis that should come. There will be more pandemics, we know that, but there are other sorts of crises and hopefully we're gonna learn some lessons from this that we can take forward uh, next time around. And uh, Caroline. Um, so I would just say that uh, this epidemic is global, but our response to it has to be local because it's happening on different timescales in different places and the health system is going to reflect the local reality. So I think um, communities need to be making decisions that reflect where they are in the epidemic and, and what resources they have um, moving forward. So again, just testing uh, in order to be able to know where you are uh, and to be able to respond if there is a resurgence. I think that has to be the first and most important point. That's, that's great. And Harvey? Building on this discussion, I would add that this epidemic really won't be over anywhere until it is over everywhere. And that means not only attending to the differences within the United States and the varieties of expression and stages of the pandemic, but it means a genuinely global outlook of collaboration, cooperation, and joint purpose with colleagues and counterparts in countries all around the world. If we don't really collaborate and work together to defeat the coronavirus in the world, no one country will ultimately be secure from the coronavirus. It's as simple as that. <laughs> 